Hello, my name is Drew Podlewski, and welcome to this video presentation on groundwater. This is the first of four videos which will teach you about what groundwater is, why it is important, and about what we can do to protect it. So first, let me ask you a question. Where do you think your drinking water comes from? A lake? A river? The ocean? Well, some of you may get your water from those places. Water from rivers, lakes, and streams is what we call surface water because it is on the surface of the ground where we can see it. Ocean water is surface water too, but we can't drink ocean water because it's so salty. Next, think about where you live. Do you live near a large river or a lake? If you do, that's probably where your drinking water comes from. But what if you live in a place without a large lake or river nearby, like in a town in the middle of the desert? Or what if the water in the lakes or streams around you is not good to drink? Where do you think your water comes from then? Well, it might actually come from the ground. That's right. The water you drink might come right from the ground beneath your feet. This is called groundwater. Now, if you go out into the backyard and start digging down with a, with a shovel, you probably won't find any water unless it rained recently. This is because groundwater is usually found deep beneath the layers of topsoil where the grass and flowers grow. We need special equipment to dig past that to reach the layers where we find the groundwater. You see, buried beneath the topsoil, they are layers of sand, gravel, and bedrock, sort of like the layers in a cake. Water from rain flows down into those layers and squeezes in between the spaces of sand and gravel or into the crevices of the bedrock, where it either stays put or continues flowing like an invisible river. We call these underground water-filled areas aquifers, and this is where groundwater comes from. If the ground layers are like a cake, then you can think of the aquifer as the layer filled with cream or jelly. Geologists, the scientists who study rocks and minerals, often give names to aquifers. For example, the Ogallala Aquifer is one of the largest in the United States. If you live in Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, or Texas, you may get your water from the Ogallala. However, if you live in Illinois, you may get your water from the Mahomet Aquifer, and it's pronounced Mahomet, not Mammoth. Now, aquifers come in many different shapes and sizes, as well as depths. Some aquifers are close by the surface, while others are hundreds of feet deep. Aquifers can even change depths depending on how much water is in them. In especially deep aquifers, the water may have been there for a very long time, hundreds of years in fact. It's a good thing water doesn't have an expiration date. Sometimes, aquifers are covered over by a layer of clay or stone that is impermeable, which means that water can't move through it. We call this layer of clay or stone an aquitard. This is important because aquitards change how water flows into the aquifer. For example, an aquifer covered over by an aquitard may not be able to refill as quickly. Sometimes, heat and pressure can force the water up through to the surface, creating natural springs. These are known as artesian wells. But more often, we actually have to drill down into those aquifers and take the water out ourselves. In medieval times, 
We had to use buckets with rope to take the water out. But today we use pumps to draw the water up from the well. The water is pumped up from the ground, cleaned, and then sent to all the schools, homes, and buildings connected to that well. So now you know where your water comes from, and you've learned some new words to describe it too. Water is an important resource for everyone. We all need water to drink to stay healthy. However, sometimes the things we do can contaminate the water and make it dangerous for us to drink. In the next video, we will learn about some of the ways that groundwater can become contaminated. Now, let's think about some of the things that you've learned today. Where does your drinking water come from? Is it surface water from a lake or stream, or is it groundwater? If you're curious, why don't you taste it? Water from different sources sometimes has different tastes. In fact, the next time you go to travel somewhere, why don't you try the water there and see if it tastes different from the water you're used to? If you use groundwater, try to figure out the name of the aquifer you use. Ask your teacher or parents to help you out. See you in the next video.